everybody welcome back to my channel today I have for you guys a pretty exciting video or at least I'm excited for it and that is my favorites video um, my favorites of all time or at least my favorites of all time as of this moment um, I have 10 books to share with you guys um, it's quite a, a good mix I think um, I would just like to say though, these are not including um, the books in a series. So yeah, that's like a whole different set. Um, on my Goodreads, I have 16 books in my favorites bookshelf. And so those six books are on there. Um, but if I talked about those, this video would be 10 million years long. And so I just kept it to like standalone novels and what i would categorize as favorites would be you know obviously five out of five stars and they're books that i have reread a lot i can i know i'm going to reread a lot in the future continuously um books that i know i'll keep forever books that have greatly impacted me like personally emotionally how i view the world my reading journey things of that nature um that's what I think makes a favorite and you know I add books to this list and take them off all the time really but some of these have been on there for quite a while some of these I've only read once or twice so um you know my opinions may change throughout the years but some of these have been on there for as long as I've been reading so you know um yeah and you know some my opinions have changed on a few of these but they'll probably always stay on my favorites list because they impacted me in such a monumental way. Anywho, rant done. Let's just get started. And the first two books I'm going to talk about are two books that really sparked my reading interest and my reading journey. And even though I haven't read one of them in many years, um, I still feel like they'll always be my favorites. So the first one I'm going to talk about is The Lost Children by Carolyn Co Cohagen. I read this, um, I think for the first time back in fourth or fifth grade. And I think I got it at a book fair, <laughs> um, one of the Scholastic book fairs. It's not Scholastic though, so maybe not. Um, I think this is like the first fantasy I ever read. Um, and I have read this, reread this book so many times, I can't even tell you. Um, I did reread it last year and um, I still gave it a five out of five because even though like it's not, if I read this for the first time now, I wouldn't be like that impressed. I just, this is one of the books that really got me into reading and um, made me love it and made me want to read more books. And so, um, yeah, this book is kind of Coraline-esque. It's about a little girl um, who meets this boy in her home and she's somewhat neglected and um, they are transported into this alternate universe type thing where all of the children have been rounded up and go missing. And, um, you know, they embark on a journey to get her back home and to find themselves and it is middle grade they're very young I think she's 11 or 12 and so um yeah it's very Coraline-esque but a little darker um and um I don't know I just you know the writing's not up to my typical standards as a 19 year old but when I read this in elementary school it blew my mind so um yeah, I love this book. Um, just for nostalgic purposes, um, five out of five stars. All these books are five out of five stars, but I probably will keep repeating that rating over and over again. Okay, so the next book is again, one I haven't, this is the one I haven't read in a long time, and it's Fever 1793 by Lori Hoss Anderson. Um, there are two more Lori Hoss Anderson books on this list. She is one of my favorite authors. Um, yes. Um, she hasn't done anything in quite a while, but I love her. Um, yes, Fever. I read this, I think, for the first time in third or fourth grade. And this is really the one that just 
really got me into reading. Um, like book books. This is one of the first chapter books that I really read. Um, and it's a historical fiction about the fever of 1793. And it follows this little girl. Oh my god, I haven't read this in so long. And she, you know, her family's impacted. I have not read this book in a long time. But I have read it like at least five or six times, probably way more. I would just start it and finish it and reread it all over again. This is also one of the first books that ever made me cry. And um, I feel like it could still make me cry. There's a high possibility. Maybe I'll reread this this year. Anywho, um, Lori Haas Anderson is one of my favorite authors. And she always has been since I read this book. I own, I think, all of her books now. Except for the poetry called Shouts. I don't own that. But everything else I own. And I've read pretty much except for one. So, um, yeah, I, I'll talk about her a lot on this channel. But yeah, this is one of my favorites. That's the last nostalgic based book though. You know, all the other ones are pretty, pretty recent favorites. Um, so the next book is another Lori Haas Anderson. Wow. If you knew me, you would not be surprised. Um, and this one is Twisted. I give this a reread at least once a year. Um, I do have the ebook version. But I found this at a used bookstore and I had been looking for it for forever and I was like, I have to have a physical copy. So here's my physical copy. This book is about a, um, let me, let me read the back. Um, high school senior named Tyler who is, um, having some trouble, you know, he's gotten into some trouble at school and that really, um, ruins his reputation but also um like he's the bad guy he's the bad boy and so he starts to attract some female attention and it all comes to like a burst out of bubble at this party where some things happen and he is falsely accused of um sexually assaulting this girl who he had previously really liked and um you know because of his ruined reputation previously um no one really believes him and it's more focused on i think i've always interpreted interpreted it more to i've always um interpreted interpreted it to be more focused on his family and um his friendships and how this event affects that and i'm just going to not a spoiler warning or anything, but like it's told from his point of view. So we know he did not do this thing. Um, we just don't know why said person accused him of it. Anyway, um, it's really good. Always makes me cry. There's this one scene that is one of my favorite scenes of any piece of literature ever. And um, it always makes me cry and it makes my heart pound. And like I've said, I've reread this. This is probably one of the books I've reread the most in my life. Um, I've read it a lot and each time there's something else that jumps out at me and I find new appreciation for it. And I just really love this book. Thank you. Okay, next book. The last Lori Hall Anderson book and how could I talk about her without mentioning Speak? Um, this is by far her most acclaimed novel. Um, I've reread this a lot. This follows a freshman who has been sexually assaulted and raped and it really isolates her from her classmates and herself and the rest of her life really and it follows her journey from the aftermath forward, um, definitely research trigger warnings and content warnings. Um, I'm, it's, I think it, yeah, it's pretty graphic. And um, it's very potent and emotional, but it's really well written. And you know, it's won all kinds of awards. Um, I actually did a presentation on this in my freshman year of high school. I don't know. Um, 
It's definitely not a light read. I don't think any of these could be considered light reads, um, which is why they have had such an emotional impact on me and why they're on this list. Um, but it is really beautiful and it's a book I think everyone could gain some value reading. So yes, here speak. Okay, the next book, wow, okay, is The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. I've read this twice, so I really, you know, um, I've read it a lot less than some of the other books. Um, this is another book that deals with rape and sexual assault. This time it spans um, the length of her high school career, I'm pretty sure, and it follows how it affects our protagonist and our main character and her life and how sh she deals with her trauma very differently than um, Melinda and Speak very, very differently. And um, so different in fact that it's always stuck with me, her story, because we never really get to see a portrayal of trauma like this in, you know, pop culture type things. I really like how it goes through all the different years of her high school experience and like she's changed each year in a different way. Um, yes, definitely research again, content trigger warnings at this. I'm pretty sure this one's pretty graphic, graphic too. It's been a while since I've read it. Um, very emotional. All of these, pretty much every book on this list makes me sob. Um, but yeah, it's a really different portrayal of a very sensitive topic and I think the author did a good job so there's that one okay I would say on a lighter note but it really isn't um next book is all the light we cannot see this was on my favorites of 2020 list I haven't read it but the once um however I can remember <laughs> this story very clearly, um, which doesn't usually happen. Oh, and this is by Anthony Doer. It follows to, not kids, teens, I hate using that word, um, as they both navigate World War II um, in different countries and in very different ways. And this book, um, the writing is exemplary. Wow, a new word. Um, but it is kind of difficult to get into. The prose is very um, elated, sad, elevated, um, and it can be intimidating, but I think I really fell into it. Um, I got this from a recommendation from a girl in my class who said she had like, it took her like six months to read it. And at one point I was like, what are you reading? And she told me about it and I was like, that sounds great. The cover's beautiful. Um, and I, for one, just ate it up. Um, again, made me absolutely sob my eyes out. And, but I think it's beautiful. I've read a lot of World War II historical fiction. Um, and this is by far like one of the best written ones and probably one of the best written books I've ever read. Um, it's beautiful and potent and really just kicks you right in the heart. And it also explores a different side of things that I had never really seen expressed in literature. Um, and I thought it did it really well. Um, I might reread this. This is making me want to reread all of these books on this list this year. Um, maybe I should get right on that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Really good. Again, I would... I wouldn't, okay, I should have said this at the beginning. Maybe research content warnings for all of these. If you know, you know, what can trigger you. I'm just saying, um, yeah, this looks really good. It's making me want to reread it, just looking at it. Okay, next book is <laughs> The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabowski. This book, um, oh wow, I have a, bookmark in it, a gum wrapper bookmark. Again, one of the 
probably one of the books I've reread the most. Um, I had this in ebook form for a long time and I've read it quite a bit. And then I got this cute mini little version. I haven't read it in a physical copy except maybe once or twice. Um, I think I reread this last year too. Um, you know, what What can I say about this that hasn't already been, been said? It follows Charlie as he goes about his first year in high school, making new friends, um, dealing with some trauma again, research the trigger warnings. Um, the movie is <laughs> really good. I love the movie and I love the book. This has been on my favorites list since seventh grade when I first read it. Um, it's really it really impacted me then and it still impacts me now just seeing how he goes about his life and dealing with his trauma um there is a theme here i love this book again one of the books i think everyone should read at least once um it's really beautiful and heart not heartwarming because it's not happy but like it touches you it's touching okay let's move on Okay. <laughs> I just had to laugh because um, I saw it and it brought back some, not me tearing up. Um, Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Talked about this in my March wrap up. All my tabbies. Um, I've read this twice now. I reread it in March and oh, holy shit, like it's probably at the top of this list. Um, I think this will be a favorite of mine for the rest of my life. I just, just looking at it makes me want to reread it and um, get emotionally destroyed all over again. This book follows Patroclus and Achilles and it's a retelling of the two ancient Greek men um, and you know the Trojan War and their lives and their love story and um, I can't talk about it without smiling and tearing up. Um, I love this book. One of my favorites of all time. I will continue to love it and reread it and own it for the rest of my life. Honestly. Um, it's so good. Again, some of the best writing I've ever read. Some of the best characterization and character development. Just all in all, some of, one of the best books I've ever read. And I love it so much. Um, yes. Thank you for listening. Okay, getting down to the last two. Um, this next one I don't think I've really talked about on this channel yet, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Um, yes, I first read this as an ebook. Was it last year? No, 2019, I think. And I loved it. Again, emotionally destroyed me. Then I got, I saw it as a, at a used bookstore as I was checking out. And I was like, I have to get it. Um, I love this book. I reread it last year, as I said, and loved it even more. And the atmosphere. Probably of all of the books on this list, this one has the most potent and individualistic atmosphere. And Erin just does a fantastic job creating the atmosphere in her books. Oh my God, The Starless Sea. I read it last year and I absolutely love that one too. Um, just the magic and it almost feels dark academia-like um, in its atmosphere and like Halloween vibes. And it takes place at a circus, but it's so dark and mysterious, but also really like Again, I wouldn't say heartwarming, it's pretty sad, but like just magical and mystical and awe-inspiring and you feel like a little kid when you're reading it. And all the different perspectives and the way the story is told, and I haven't even really told you what it's about. Really, it follows these two people who are um, immersed in the magical arts and they are pitted against each other in this long, long lasting game that is basically run through the circus. And, um, you know, there might be some romance involved, um, but their story is just so immaculately told and complex and 
just a book that will stick with you. And I really, really love this book right here. It's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Okay, last book on this list. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I read this maybe in eighth grade. I can't remember. I know I've had this book for a long time. Um, I think I may have tried to read it in 2013. I was sixth grade. I think I tried to read it in middle school and it was too much for me. And then I reread it again in middle school, like a couple of years later and loved it. Moral of the story, I reread it. Oh, time. What is time? 2019? 2018? 2019? I can't remember. Um, not that long ago. A couple of years. And oh my god, I immediately ran and put it on my favorites list. Um, this book is big and it is full of content. But frankly, it's one of the most heart-wrenching, um, gut-punching books I've ever read. And yes, it make I like... <laughs> This is probably, again, one of the books that has made me sob the most. This and Song of Achilles. Holy cow. But this by far takes the cake. Um, like, ugly cried, mom was concerned, hyperventilating, sob. Um, but it's told so beautiful, beautifully and in such a unique manner. And all I have to say is it's told through the viewpoint of death, like death as an entity. I mean, come on, um, you know, um, World War One, World War One, what? World War Two, her family's trying to help a Jewish man, um, et cetera, et cetera. Things happen. It's just so beautiful, and it really um, connects with the bonds of friendship and humanity. And family and just oh my god I want to reread it oh my god I I really want to reread it um, I'm gonna have to reread all of these books oh my god just talking about them I'm like Jesus Christ I want to reread all of these pronto um yeah I love this book so 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 much um as you can see, it's very battered, um, very battered. And I just think this is, again, a book I'm going to love and keep and reread for the rest of my life. Um, will I ever shut up about it? I don't know. Um, yeah, that was my favorites video. I hope you guys enjoyed, um, got some book recommendations. Um, let me know what some of your favorites are. If you match some of mine, um, I feel like it would be interesting to do another video that's like favorite series and my favorite book, books in those series. Um, it'd be really long though, <laughs> um, but also really fun. So yeah, if you want to get a sneak peek of that, Goodreads will be in the description and they're all on my favorites bookshelf. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed making this video. I'm really inspired to go read right now. Like. I want to read all these books simultaneously right now, but I can't. Um, I'm only one human being. So thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, maybe possibly. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. See you next week. Peace out. <laughs> Goodbye. In the video. I really want to go read. Oh my God.